We'll go squish around in the goose shit for a few hours, see what we can pull out of here. So I have been asked, if not borderline dared, over the years by many Hookshots fans to shoot an episode devoted solely to the Chain Pickle. Lucky number 10. Now in the hierarchy of coveted Esox species, right, the Pickerel sits squarely at the bottom. And I gotta tell you, I always thought like, man, that's really a shame. Because in my opinion, the Chain Pickerel has a lot going for it. Okay, for starters, right, they're available to a whole lot of people. I don't know where you guys live, but where I live, there's not exactly great northern pike fishing around here, or particularly outstanding musky fishing. <laughs> but what I do have is a whole lot of chain pickerel, and let's be honest, they'll eat anything, and they'll eat it often. I have quite literally been fishing this little pond in the woods since I was like 11 years old. My opinion, they are a light tackle gem and I have used the pages of Field and Stream over the years to spread the good word of chain pickerel as much as I possibly could. I will write about pickerel any chance that I get. Oh, oh come here. Oh. <laughs> Now, ironically, if you look back in the history of Field and Stream, we used to publish pickerel stories all the time. And I'm talking about big, long features about pickerel. Which leaves me asking, when did America fall out of love with the chain? Now, I do understand, right, that for a lot of guys, pickerel are nothing but a line-cutting pain in the ass that get in the way of your bass fishing. Matter of fact, if you caught our Cape Cod largemouth saga just a few episodes ago, you might recall that the two biggest fish we caught the entire trip, both of which we were hoping were the big bass we were looking for, turned out to be slob pickerel. Got excited though. And the ironic thing is that everywhere that I pickerel fish, I end up bumping into all this other stuff that guys want so bad, and I'm just like, oh, big crappie. Don't even want that right now. Billy likes to eat shiners. You know, that hunt starts for me in the really early part of the spring, you know, when there's still like some leftover snow on the ground and the ground's all soupy and nasty and squishy. And that early season success often revolves around fishing kind of slow and soaking live shiners under bobbers. Now, I don't care what you fish for or how you fish for it. If you no longer get jacked up, by the sight of a bobber getting sucked under, okay? Something is wrong with you. I have already lost two here today that could have freaking ate that one. But naturally, right, wherever you go pickerel fishing, you tend to catch a lot of really small fish. But when that flash on that jerk bait's a little bigger, that bobber goes down a little bit harder, and you know, right, that's the one that you were after. That's the one we were looking for. Because while 50 inches might be the mark to musky guys, 20 inches is all you need to call it a trophy in the pickerel game. And it tends to be in those nasty early first couple warm days of the spring when you can really catch a pre-spawn stunner. Huge pick. Come on, by the skin of the lip, by the skin of the lip. <sighs> Solo session payout right there. That is an egg-filled March fatty. That is the caliber I've been waiting on. That was the one I was after. Ugh, that felt good. You know, and then the spring starts to get warmer and warmer, right? And things start to change. All of a sudden, those chains start getting a little more fired up and a little more fired up, and then they start going on jerk baits and stick baits, and they start chasing down flies. And if you ask me, right, no BS. When you're working a stick bait, and you have a big pickerel run in right to your feet and just stop right there, just hang there for a couple seconds and you give it that one little twitch and it goes, it gets me as jacked up as seeing a muskie going on a bucktail in a figure eight. T-boned it. You know, pickerel might lack the size of pike and muskies, right? 
but the aggression is the same and the way they stalk a bait is the same and the way they'll get behind it and track it is the same roadside fluke eater and unlike musky fishing i can catch 20 pickerel in one day here we go again but ironically when that early pickerel season rolls around even i have a pretty damn hard time finding somebody who wants to go pickerel fishing which is why you'll notice that most of the footage you're seeing, that's all solo JC, okay? That's tripods and head cams and solo missions. Now, while I might not have any hometown homeboys to go pickerel fishing with very often, okay? For there is one longtime Hook Shots fan in particular who is the quintessential pickerel junkie, and that is Ed Guth Jr., better known as the Bearded Wonder. The Beard! Live and in person. I mean, how serious is Ed about pickerel? He's got a 24 inch custom cut pickerel bolted to the front of his truck. Love pickerel fishing, anything mean, got teeth. No one else likes them, so no one goes for them. So then there's no competition. Going for them, man, it's the closest thing I got around here to pike or a muskie. Now, Ed lives in South Jersey, okay? And when I say South Jersey, I mean like South South Jersey. Down here, it's farm fields, it's country. You got, you got farm field over here, corn on that side, and, and tons of lakes. Now, truth be told, Ed and I have been trying to get together all spring, and every time we would set something up around his work schedule, we'd get weathered out, or we'd have a cold front. And by the time we got together, it was July. And I knew going into this that Ed was pulling out all the stops. And he said, look, I got this lake, okay? It's a little funky. Every lake around here has either a bulkhead or a small dam or something that blocks it. This is the spot, gator land right here. <laughs> so Ed just pulled over on the side of the road and now we gotta sneak this John boat through a, uh, through a, a gap in a fence. But as pretty as Ed's spot looked, I couldn't help but think, you know what? It's, it's 80 degrees, that water, okay? It's hot, this is not March or April anymore. So the question was, where are we going to get the gators that Ed is known for in the spring to chew in the middle of July? What's up, everybody? Since it's the middle of summer and JC ain't doing a whole lot of fly fishing in this episode, here's an EK buggy whip tip for all you dog day fly guys. You know, when the water gets really hot, species like pickerel and smallmouth can get really lazy. So lazy that they might not want to chase traditional flies like clousers and zonkers. That's because weighted flies are still moving quickly when you stop and they fall. That's why this time of year, I always carry a bunch of unweighted, flat profile bait fish flies. This style of fly may be a lot more common in saltwater, but can be a secret weapon this time of year in the fresh. I like to make a few subtle strips and then completely stop. When you stop one of these patterns, they hover. What they also do is flip on their side and flutter like a dying bait fish. This creates an easy meal for a fish that really doesn't feel like chasing. And quite often, that bite comes on a dead slack line. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear it from today's happy charter client. He's Captain Eddie. Catch many big fish on fly fishing. You call, yeah? Now what Ed had explained was that even though all this bank structure on this little lake looked so juicy, he said, I don't catch my big fish there. These big pickerel are in these, they're these deep open water fish where this bottom is covered in coontail. And there was just one spot where it shelves off and then this, this grades and they're right down in that deep stuff sometimes, especially in this time of year where it's so hot out. And despite the heat and the time of year, it did not take him five minutes to hook a good one. Nice fish, dude. There we go. Nice fish. They're underrated fish, especially when it comes to fighting. On light tackle, you get a you get an ultralight setup out there. You got a fight on your hand. When you think the largemouth jump, these guys are like green tarpon. Ed. Yeah. One of the things that makes this lake grow them big is that their primary food source is yellow perch. So I show up with my normal offerings, right? My normal stick baits, the normal things that I throw for pickerel closer to home all the time. Ed, on the other hand, has got a small yellow perch pattern swim bait on. Oh, look at that, yes! Bam, right there, right on the stop. Kills it. Slap it up on the old board, 23 inches with the tail folded. Real nice one. And I'm not stupid, okay? I did not exactly come armed with a lot of perch-colored stuff, 
but I found a stick bait that was perch colored and they tore it up. And they're raring to go, I mean, and it would eat right at the boat. And for a good portion of that morning, it was fire. I mean, it was downright fire. Ed had us sitting right in the middle of this lake in the deep and we were throwing up onto this weedy flat and bringing those lures back across it into the deep water. And that's the presentation that these pickerel wanted. So considering that these fish can get funky in the summer, they tend to be easier to catch in spring. This is some pretty incredible midsummer pickerel fishing on Ed's Lake. Ed, you got it dialed in, brother. And then, see, those pickerel did a very esox like thing. They windowed on us. As the day went later on, the guy even cloudier, the guy in cloud, and that wind picked up. You get that last few feet in, and they went in, and then they see it, and they're gone. It gets turned them right off. Look at Ed's magical beard flapping in the wind. <laughs> but you know what? I can't complain. I was so worried about not getting high caliber fish in the middle of the summer. But Ed is dialed. Ed is a pickerel whisperer man. So pickerel freaks, that one's for you, okay? That was five months of on and off pickerel filming. And while I encourage everybody to show their local pickerel more love, I personally may take a year off from pickerel fishing after this one. I have never pickerel fished so hard in my entire life. Figure eight and a pickerel. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.